All right, today is the day, and it is Leviathan Tuesday. At least that's what we're going to start trying to achieve. We're going to try to step up the game here and make it so that we get a video out on Tuesday for Leviathan. And then we're also going to push Arete from Thursday to Friday. Give a little bit of a gap between there. Give me some time to kind of uh, get the two of them separated and produced once a week for each of those projects. Well, at least we're going to try to do that. No promises there, but we will just keep working towards that goal as we can. Anyway, today we are just looking at a little follow up on the last week video for Leviathan when we got that uh, differential rebuilt. It is time to take it and put it back under the chassis. That's what we're going to look at today. Let's jump in, take a look. When I got this axle, it came without any brakes. So having the convenience of having the brakes out of the way, I decided to uh, put some new brake shoes on for the emergency brake. They were there. And that's just a matter of, uh, well, any brake job is a matter of uh, taking it apart and then putting it back together in the opposite configuration with new parts. So these brake shoes just clipped on to the expander on the bottom that the cable pulls on. And then you have a little adjuster at the top, spring that holds them together. A couple of retainers in the back as well that emergency brake shoes are on. Get some new rotors and then we're going to bring the calipers over from the old axle. And I didn't spend too much time on trying to repaint these things. They're uh, going to be dirty the first day you drive it anyway. And we're trying to get this uh, prototype on the road as quick as we can. Maybe we can come back and clean things up more later. But once those uh, calipers rotors are on, time to put the wheels on this thing this axle weighs about 360 pounds all assembled so the only way to really move it around easily is with some wheels so why not put the regular drive wheels on it and we can use that to maneuver it around get it in position under our chassis so once we've uh, released the engine hoist off there going to replace a couple of brake lines because like I said this thing came from a wrecking yard and they just of course get it out of the vehicle as quick as they can and that's just a matter of uh, chopping the brake lines off with a sawzall or whatever bolt cutters. So I'm replacing my brake lines with my new caliper lines connecting them up. Now we're going to roll this thing over and get it into position under the chassis. Now of course it sounds easier than it is because you trying to line that thing up it has to be close enough that a little 3 8 pin goes in a hole. Now these brackets that go in the U-bolts bottom, they were so rusty and full of crud that they have no way to drain. So all the water and dust collects in the bottom of these things. And of course, that's a recipe for a lot of captured moisture. So I'm going to clean them out the best I can. And I'm going to do something novel. I'm going to drill a hole in the bottom of the little cup so that when it does get moisture, it will drain out rather than sit in that little cup area. Also going to take it and throw a couple of good coats of uh, rust inhibitor chassis paint. And while those things are uh, curing, get this axle lined up a little more precisely again. Also need to go in underneath here and uh, rotate the axle around so that the mounts for the leaf springs as they come down, they'll be flat. Now the idea is to get these little tiny pegs, the middle of the leaf springs to line up in that hole on that flat plate. Luckily we have some jacks in place to lower the chassis down. Well, we can just move that thing now a lateral move is a little bit more difficult, but it seems like we're getting close. Maybe a little more rotation on the axle there. And then it looks like it's in place. So drop those brackets in, newly painted, new U-bolts that were rusted away as well. And get some uh, bolts onto them. Once those are in place, hook up our brake lines. 
We also have an emergency brake that we need to hook up. It, of course, just uh, clips around the little lever mechanism. And then there are a couple of little barbs that go into this hole and keep it from uh, pulling back out. Expand those barbs back out from the removal. Press it in this hole. And we have the e-brake in place. Now we're going to replace our shock absorbers as well. I've got some new shocks from Rancho. Get the bolts in place. You need three hands. You might as well just use your head. Get it pointing right where it needs to go because once we got the retainer back, it's going to start to expand. Push it back until you get some bolts in it. They came with these nice dust covers. We'll get those stretched into place. A little zip tie to hold it around the body of the shock. Then on to the other side, same thing. You're fighting this thing trying to expand on you while you're getting the boot on there. Once you get that bolt, of course, then you're home free. A boot again, zip tie. Now here's the old shock. Floppy and loose. Going to be a new ride after this. Well, there you go. The axle is in the chassis. Now the only thing left to do is to pull out the front differential. Luckily, it comes out independent without the axles. Independent front suspension so it can stay up there on its wheels. When that differential comes out, we will be rebuilding that. We've got this uh, grease blob here that needs to be rebuilt. Looking at having that done professionally somewhere else. Um, so I can get things moving along without having to spend time on that, do some other things, but we need to get that chassis back together so we can have a new cab and new subframes to start installing that kind of thing. Anyway, that will be another day. Thanks for stopping by. Come back. See us again.